Thank you. Um, you know, I uh, criticized the policy coming out of the Department of Health and Human Service because I thought that some of the critics, including critics of my own denomination, had a point. Um, and I thought it, they had misstepped, and I uh, urged the White House to correct the problem. Um, I believe, like millions of Americans, that they did correct the problem. Um, and I believe today's hearing is a sham. Uh, and I believe, uh, I have to assume each of you gentlemen came here in good faith. But surely it has not escaped your attention that you are being used for a political agenda. Maybe you are willingly being used, I don't know. I don't know what is in your heart. Here you are being asked to testify about your rights being trampled on, an overstatement if there ever was one, while you are on a panel and your participation on the panel makes you complicit in, of course, the trampling of freedom, because we were denied on this side of the aisle any witness who might have a differing point of view. Would the gentleman yield? No, sir, I will not. And I think that is shameful. I think it actually contradicts exactly what you think you are here to testify about. And I think it taints the value of this panel that could have been a thoughtful discussion, but it is not. This is a panel designed with your conscious participation or not to try one more time to embarrass the President of the United States and his administration by overstating an issue which is sacred to all Americans, religious freedom. But of course, in order to do it, we have to, in an almost Stalinist-like fashion, have signs of Democratic icons to rub Democratic faces in it as if those icons would be on the same side of this dispute today. But since they are all deceased, it would be hard to gainsay that. And so I say to you as a member of this committee who actually shared the concerns you say you have last week that I think this is a shameful exercise. And I am very sad you have chosen to participate and be used the way you are being used, just as you were in the previous questioning, as if people are going to jail over this. Shame. Everybody knows that is not true. But Catholic hospitals supported the compromise. They are not afraid of closing down hospitals in America. If we want to have a legitimate debate about you know, where is the right boundary, let us have it. But overstating it and making charges that are just outlandish and, frankly, beyond the pale, serves no purpose other than political demagoguery in an election year. And men and women of the cloth, it seems to me, ought to run, not walk, away from that line. I now yield to my colleague from Connecticut, Ms. Rosa DeLore. I thank my colleague um, for yielding to me. I think that one of the, uh, the uh, pieces of information that hasn't been discussed here today at all, quite frankly, is that, in fact, there is an exemption for the Catholic Church, uh, other houses of worship, for the Catholic Church and the synagogues, for mosques. There is an exemption. Uh, the gentleman will suspend. The gentleman cannot leave the room while yielding to another member. Would you please remain? <laughs> the gentleman. The gentleman has yielded back his time. We now go to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ferris. Mr. Chairman, the gentleman is standing right there. Uh, the gentleman has returned. Is the gentleman going to remain, please? He was standing right there. Yeah, right he did. here, Mr. Chairman. Let the, the, gentle lady, the, gentle, let the lady talk. The gentle lady may please continue. Take your hands off me. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. I also just appreciate the opportunity to be on this, to be here today. And I know I'm not a member of this committee, so I appreciate that. But I also appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak at this. Uh, 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 in, this, in this forum. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the churches, synagogues, mosques, other houses of worship are exempt as are their employees. Let us state the fact on that. As, and most recently, we had a Supreme Court decision that upheld the opportunity for those houses of worship to be able to hire whomever they want so that the church is exempt, 
their employees are exempt. Understand that what we're talking about here today, and I will speak about the Catholic Church as a provider and as an employer, and the fact of the matter is, as a provider, nothing changes. The conscience clause, all of that is intact. It is not inviolable. It is, you, cannot, you cannot dispense, prescribe, use a contraceptive service if that is so choosing. But in fact, the church is an employer. And as an employer, and now particularly under the uh, accommodation that was made, that there has to be provided for people who work for that entity to be able to get insurance coverage that includes the recommendations of the Institute of Medicine, which is a medical independent research body that was asked to come up with what are the essential preventive services that women would need for health care. And amidst them, amidst them, there is contraceptive coverage. The gentleman's time has Not expired. We now, go to the gentleman from, we now go to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Perenthal. Talk about abridging freedom of speech. 